Today we're going to be checking out the ADNV G14 SE and the Psyonix Opsin Digital Night Vision Monoculars. ADNV's new night vision lineup has dramatically disrupted the higher end of the digital night vision marketplace, which had previously been dominated by the Psyonix Opsin, and understanding both of these devices' capabilities and how they compare is relevant for anybody considering getting into high quality digital night vision. So in this video, we're going to help you understand the pros and cons to each of these monoculars to help you make the best decision about which one of these might be right for you. We're going to start off with a quick physical comparison and then we'll jump into the performance in the second half of the video. At the time of filming, the Opsin is available for purchase for around $1,995 and the G14 SE can be picked up from Goodnight Gear for $1,615.50 after the 10% discount code US10 is applied. Both of these devices are fairly similar from a basic design perspective and the build quality seems to be pretty much on par with each other. One of the most significant differences between between these two devices is battery options, and you do get more choices with the G14 SE, which can run on either a 16340, a CR123A disposable, and they also include a larger cover for an 18650 battery. And this setup is very efficient, and the run times are actually pretty similar to those that you'd get with the Psyonix Opsin, which comes with a battery pack, which is designed to be run as a counterweight. And this battery pack is pretty heavy, so there is a significant weight savings advantage to the ADNV G14 SE. These are the included mounting options and the G14 SE comes with an ultralight metal mount that can be configured for running a single monocular or bridging two together for a bino setup. And the quality, durability, and flexibility of this setup is very impressive for an included accessory. The Opsin does come with a robust dovetail mount and it does have some adjustability to it and definitely does the job that you would need to. But as far as I know, this can just be run as a monocular and not in a bino configuration with any kind of readily available hardware that I've seen. Let's Let's jump into some comparison footage between these two units. On the left in the grayscale, we've got footage from the G14 SE recorded through the external RS2 video recorder. And on the right is the Psyonix Opsin. And this footage was recorded to a removable SD card. And all the stuff was filmed with a waning crescent moon with 4% illumination. So these are really difficult conditions as far as moonlight is concerned, as most of the month you will have more moonlight to work with. All of the footage we're going to look at does not have any supplemental IR lighting, but for super dark indoor environments, you can turn on a built-in 940 nanometer IR illuminator on the G14 SE, but there isn't one built into the Opsin, so you will need to rely on supplemental IR lighting of some sort like their helmet mountable 1050 nanometer IR illuminator which is designed to be undetectable to many analog night vision devices. The G14 SE can also detect up to 1100 nanometer IR lighting as well and IR lighting wavelength detection ranges between analog and digital night vision devices is a topic that we're going to be exploring in the near future. The G14 SE has a 4 3rd shaped 800 by 600 screen and the Opsin has a rectangular 1920 by 1080 display and the resolution is slightly greater with the Opsin. Opsin. Things get a little more interesting when we compare the fields of view and to help make this a little easier to visualize I've overlaid their two images and on top in light blue we've got the Opsin and beneath that in the light gray is the G14 SE. You do get a very slightly wider horizontal field of view with the Opsin which is about 44 degrees compared to the G14 SE so this does put the Opsin at a slight advantage for observational purposes but the G14 SE does allow you to see a decent amount more vertically which puts that device at more of an advantage for navigation and rapid movements. Latency, also known as the time it takes for the screen inside the eyepiece to catch up with the real world, is incredibly low on both these devices. And we did some testing on this for a digital night vision tier list video that was released a few weeks ago. And that video is a good one to check out if you want to see how some of the higher end digital night vision devices compare to the lower end stuff. They are both also capable of running at very high frame rates and the G14 SE can run at 100 frames per second and the Opsin can run at 90 frames per second. You can lower the frame rates down quite a bit on both, which will slightly improve the low light performance, but lower frame rates impact your ability to see and navigate quickly, so there is a bit of a trade-off. When they're both running at their highest frame rates, they do provide a very good user experience that's very close to real time. One thing that the Opsin does bring to the table that's quite nice is a color viewing mode, which does provide more contrast than the grayscale on the G14 SE, and this added color contrast is going to make it easier for you to spot things in some circumstances compared to the ADNV, particularly in well-lit environments. 
environments, so long as you're not staring directly towards ambient lighting. Ambient lighting is definitely a challenge for the Opsin, and areas with light can really get washed out, especially when looking directly towards a light source. But the ADNV does do a much better job and does not get washed out, so there's definitely an advantage to the G14 SE in areas with mixed ambient lighting, and in general, the Opsin seems to have pretty poor dynamic range performance and has a tough time in mixed lighting environments. This difference in performance is quite noticeable when we look down in the distance, and you can see a lot further down the path into the dark tree area with the G14 SE compared to the Opsin, and increased visibility into a tree line is quite an advantage to the ADNV device. With ample moonlight, you are going to be able to see pretty well with both of these devices in many instances, and even in these conditions with low moonlight, both of these units will significantly outperform the human eye. However, when you start to wander into more heavily forested area with denser trees and less visible moonlight, the performance of the G14 SE really excels, and you can see a lot more in low light areas, which definitely provides a boost to your navigation and observational capabilities. With the G14 SE, you can still make out some of the foreground and see a bit further back into the trees, but with the Opsin, the higher areas and the tree line are really the only things that you can see, which would not be enough for you to navigate. With the G14 SE, it can still be challenging, but you are definitely at an advantage. But it is important to know the limitations of these devices, and obviously we are in conditions where higher lighting might be needed to navigate more effectively, but these kinds of conditions would prove to be difficult for analog devices as well. We're about to wrap things up, so I'll leave you with my final thoughts. The Opsin does have a few good things going for it, including an interesting color mode, which has its advantages in a few different environments. And the color video recording is also pretty nice. And the UI is still the most impressive of any digital device on the market. However, the weak low light performance, the poor dynamic range, and the high price are still tough to grapple with for high end digital night vision. It is a step up from the sub $500 NVG30, but the performance really isn't that much better to really justify the price tag. And we did compare both of those two devices together in another video as well, which I will link to down below. Overall, it seems to me that the clear winner in most cases it is the G14 SE. The low light performance is far superior. The field of view is slightly favorable for navigation. The dynamic range is better. There are significant weight advantages binocular capabilities, built-in IR, and to top it off, the price is nearly $400 cheaper than the Opsin. In my opinion, this is the best sub $2,000 device by a long shot, and is in many ways comparable with second generation analog. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below, and there will be links down in the description you can check out if you want to learn more about these devices and also help support the channel.